Hi, John Cooksey here, and as we adventure out into the field and take some great pictures, we're going to need to know a lot about the top of the dial. The top of the dial will give you a lot of flexibility in the type of pictures you could take. So let's learn the top of the dial right now. As you see, the first one is the green setting, and when you start off with your camera and you first start to learn it, this is the setting you want because this is fully automatic. This will give you the confidence and the ability to go out and take some great pictures right off the bat, but it won't give you the flexibility that you're going to have later with some of these other settings. Fully automatic will not let you change any particular things, but if you're taking family pictures or something and you want to just a quick point and shoot mode, that's the mode for you. The next setting is Creative Auto. Now this brings up a special menu which will allow you to adjust some of the advanced features without having to be an advanced user. We're going to go more into that later. The next one is P or Program. Now this is just like the green mode, the automatic, with the exception of being able to change things from, in essence, an automatic mode. So things will default to automatic, but if you're doing landscapes or portraits or anything and you want to change things in a manual type of mode, you can do it. But if you don't change things, it'll act just like the green or automatic mode. The next one is TV. Now this doesn't mean television. That's time value, also known as shutter priority. Time value will allow you to get slow shutter speeds or fast shutter speeds, bringing in more or less light, depending on what you want to do. Let me go to the first one here for a second. This is the Hot Water Springs in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And if you'll notice, the fog is really sort of blurry and the water tends to create this really long lines. That's because we set the shutter down to, I think, about a quarter of a second, a shutter speed allowing you to have that effect. So when you understand what shutter priority can do, you say, I want to get that sort of softer effect. This is what you can do. Let's look at another shot right here. If you want that soft look to um, water going down a stream or whatever, you would like to slow your shutter down. Now keep in mind, slowing it down is going to let in a lot more light, so you have to turn down your ISO or maybe put some neutral density filters on. But what if you wanted the reverse? What if you wanted a high shutter speed? Let's take a look at that. So you can also set your shutter speed up really high. So it's the 1 500th, 1 1,000th. So now keep in mind it's in fractions when we say higher. And that'll allow you to not have the blur. Now it'll, allow, it'll have less light. So if you're taking indoor basketball and there's not a lot of light, you're going to want to pump up your ISO. Later on, you'll learn about that kind of uh, adjustments between all those different things to make the best picture. Let's go on to the next one in line here. We have your... Uh, aperture priority or AV aperture value and let's take a look at some examples of why you'd want to use aperture value here's a low aperture setting it to about 3.5 or 4 notice the backgrounds out of focus so you want a low aperture if you want the background out of focus and you just want to highlight your main subject but what if you wanted everything in focus a high aperture for a landscape or anything here's an example of a high aperture now you notice our subjects are in focus plus the background is in focus. A lot of people want that when they don't have to worry about focusing so much, but a lot of people want the low aperture when you're trying to deal with just pointing out a particular subject. The more expensive the lens, the more it'll allow usually it to get a really low aperture like this might be at like three or something like that. Some of the less expensive lenses will not let you go out that out of focus. And keep in mind, the more you zoom in, the more you're going to have less depth of field. So zooming in on a zoom lens will allow you to do that easier. Now we're going to go to the next one in line, which is manual. This is simply allow you to adjust shutter and aperture all in relation um, to each other or not in relation to each other. So you can get some really creative experiments on ideas. Manual is really good for learning all the basics of the cameras. You go into manual mode and you're going to have a light meter inside your lens or uh, through the lens or on the back of the camera. Keep in mind that when you're in aperture or shutter mode, you're going to adjust one and the, the camera is going to compensate the other to make sure you get the proper exposure. In manual mode, it'll allow you to get way overexposed or underexposed pictures and so you sort of have to be more careful and use the light meter or you have to do a lot of experimenting. But what a great way to learn how all those go together by practicing in manual mode. The next one is bulb mode. Now bulb mode in a way is like manual mode but will allow you to hold the shutter down as long as you need to to get a picture. Let's take a look at this. Here we were outside with Martha and it was just lit by one little fluorescent 
street light that you could see to the left, a little um, driveway light. And then I ran around back with a flashlight, a little LED flashlight, and we kept it in bulb mode, keeping the shutter down as long as we needed to run around her and create this little goofy halo effect. Now, we told her to stay totally still because if she were to move, she would be blurry. So she stayed totally still, held it down for about 10 or 12 seconds as we ran around creating that experiment and then getting out of the way, releasing the shutter and therefore getting the picture. And the neat thing about digital is you can then go back and look and through trial and error make the best picture you want in bulb mode. The next ones are pretty much all the same, but they're different. They're three creative modes. I'm sorry, I said creative, I meant custom modes. Now what this will allow you to do if you have three people in your family, each one of you can have a little mode because one person may want some particular kind of settings, maybe uh, internally more um, black and white or uh, somebody else may want it more sharp or someone want one of the custom settings inside and everybody has their own idea of what they want, one of the presets, and then you can just turn to it. Or you could say, hey, when I'm doing indoor weddings, I use this. When I'm doing outdoor weddings, I, I do that. And when I'm taking personal pictures, I have these particular uh, custom settings. And you're going to learn more about how to set those custom settings and what they all do later in this video. So that's all for this uh, top of the dial. Now let's get on to our next section.